Hey dude. Hey dude, what's going on YouTubers? Um, well, so uh, yeah, quite a lot of shite um, happened today so far and uh, um, well, uh, just um, you know, don't actually you know feel like um, doing much, but uh, ma you know, but ma making you know, but continuing to make another video, you know, <laughs> so that I can you know, um, so that I can you know, you know, f you know, focus on what still matters, um, such as you know, making myself you know as pr productive as i can <clears throat> you know amidst of all these afflictions and tri tribulations and shite um <sighs> well so um so in this video you know i um i i mainly i mainly um aim to um give you guys you know my own you know my own reviews you know uh, blended w with my own thoughts and experiences you know um <clears throat> You know of making cold calls so so uh, this video is you know uh this video is about you know my own reviews you know by reading and uh, uh, blending in and uh, also a bit of uh a a a a analyzing you know a book you know called um yes it's uh <laughs> not sure if you you know if you have watched you know uh, my previous video you know about such book you know but you know, it's a book called uh, "Yes Lessons from uh, from a Hundred Thousand Cold Calls." So, um, well, since, since you know, I felt quite keen, you know, to you know, to make as many cold cold um, cold calls as I can for t for tonight. Uh, well, though you know, I met some setbacks, you know, of uh, you know of. Uh, of you know set set setback number one, you know um since I got since since I I got up you know quite quite late today you know almost you know you know you know you know um at at sunset and you know therefore it you know it made you know it it made you know it it you know it rendered you know me you know not much time. You know to make um, phone to to make cold to make phone calls wo voice calls you know m much less cold um cold calls responsibly and uh, you know can um, and considerately in a considerate and responsible manner you know you know to my neighbors so um, so um, as a, you know um, due to uh, those reasons you know I kind of you know have to um, you know refrain you know from making more cold calls um, you know at night you know to greet uh, to greet to greet Britain you know d d despite the setbacks I met um, tonight so why not you know may make make some good use of of this um, so-called you know um, blank um, period, you know, to read and uh, review, uh, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of, you know, some 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 books, you know, particularly some books about sales, about cold calls, you know, etc. So, yeah. So, um, so without further ado, so uh, uh, f uh, first of all, um, I, I I would like to read and uh, you know I would like to review and you know I I I would like to you know to review part of part of this book called um, 10 um, lessons from uh, from a hundred thousand cold calls you know you know by reading you know a few chapters and then uh, and uh, uh, blend in some my own some of my own thoughts and experiences you know first hand experiences I've had you know cook on um, code calling um, people and uh, you know you know, as well as business entities, you know, you know, um, all, um, all across, you know, the whole planet. So without further ado, let us get to it. So uh, here comes um, chapter twenty-four, harmonic, um, ha um, harmonic, um, harmonic conversation, um, ha um, harmonic conversation, <laughs> not ha harmonic. Harmonic. Yeah, harmonic, not harmonic. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Ha harmonic conversation. The key to a powerful tone of voice is harmony. 
the blending of musical notes into a into a pleasing, relaxing river of sound. While researchers have learned that individuals may differ in defining which specific sounds are harmonious, each of us senses harmony and responds to it in a positive way. When we hear harmonious voices or participate in harmonious relationships, we feel safer, more relaxed, more peaceful, and more open to others. Think of voices that have calm. That have calmed you in the past. Remember a parent who comforted you after a bad dream, or a kind or a kind teacher who helped you understand a confusing subject. Their voices were low and soft in tone, not whispers or dramatic、uh, bass or bass notes, but strong, steady, harmonious beacons of sound. To find your harmonious voice,、um, hum at a pitch that seems most comfortable. Hum with your mouth closed and listen to the vibrations inside your head. Over time, you will sense the harm the、um, the harmonic force of your own voice that can travel undetected into the receptive mind of the customer.、Um, yeah, I do. You know, it's. You know, so far this chapter, you know, makes me think of you know, you know, my you know whether you know my voice a- a- actually sounds soothing or ha- or harmonic or um ha- um harmonious. Well, s- since I you know I might you know I kind of be- begin you know to um to perceive myself you know that you know more often than not I might sound you know. You know, a bit way too intimidating, even pushy. You know, to my, you know, to the leads, or you know, or the to the, you know, to the bunches of, um, to the bunch of、uh, potential、um, clients I get, ga- I gathered and cold call to. Um, every every now and then, yes, it kind of you know makes me you know, you know want to re, you know, to to reassess, you know, the you know, the, you know the. You know the、um, the fundamental properties of my own voice, you know, and, and you know, and the manner, you know, the you know, the fashion, you know, you know, which I tend to follow, you know, whenever I speak to people.、Um, yeah, yes, but、um, I suppose, you know, as a man, you know, what else can I, can I do, you know, to make my voice sound more soothing? Unless you know, I <laughs> unless I cut my I cut my oh, oh, my 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 organs off and、uh, you know <laughs> well, but but I certainly won't do it. Um, you know, though it, you know, some sometimes whenever you know my 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 intrusive thoughts begin you know to gain the upper hand over me, you know, more or less, you know, yeah, it does feel quite. Tempting, you know, to do so, but nevertheless, let us proceed. So loudness, control the volume, measured in in <coughs> measured in what? Decibels. Yeah, me-、um, measured in decibels. Measured in decibels. Yes, measured in decibels. Yes, it, it, it's a measuring u um um uh yes a a measuring unit um you know for the intensity of sounds, yeah. Um, you know, or vi, you know, or vibrations. Yes, sort of. Yeah, decibel. Yes, it, it's a unit, and、uh, it, it's a scalar. You know, instead of a vector. If, if you know, if my memory, you know,、uh, about you know the you know the you know、um, you know the physics I, I I learned back in my back in the days. You know, in my more in my younger and more I- innocent days,、um, still still serves. So yeah. So measured in decibels, loudness is technically a measure of the intensity or power with which the sound is emitted. Yes, as you can see, you know, I, 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 you know, I almost, you know, read, read, you know, the author's mind <laughs> almost exactly. Yeah. However, loudness is also a function of human per- perception related to the physical characteristics of a person's ears. 
and the processing of his brain. What's too loud to one listener may just be right for another. Yes, that also reminds me of you know ear um, ear wax. Well, I still have my well, I perceive and suspect that I still have I still have I currently still have my left my my you know my right ear you know obstructed you know by a multitude of ear wax and I must find some other time you know to get rid of them for for good if God's still willing yeah and yeah it's uh did I pronounce this word right you know in you know in terms of a British posh a accent you know just to be sure let's uh, let's Please allow some time for my, you know, for my Siri embedded in, you know, onto my I iPad to read this sentence aloud in British accent. Measured in decibels, loudness is technically a measure of the intensity or power with which the sound is emitted. Yeah, measured in decibels, loudness is technically a measure of the of the intensity or power which the sound is emitted emitted or emitted yeah it's uh, eh, eh, um, emit or emit yeah I, I'll have to look up other you know other dictionaries you know just to be sure you know ju just to be sure about you know how Brits tend to pronounce you know emitted you know so but, but regardless let us proceed yeah let's shelve that for now However, loudness is also a function of human perception related to the physical characteristics of a person's ears and the processing of his brain. What's too loud to, to one listener may be just right for another. The chart below illustrates the decibels of common sounds at uh, 130 hertz. For example, the human ear begins to experience pain. Yeah, say uh, whenever uh, you hear you know, uh, 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 yeah, a uh, thunder, yeah, that, that, that's when, you know, <laughs> and, and then you know, jet, jets or airplane takes off, yeah, yeah, so, so I shall just, um, omit, you know, the table, you know, for the sake of simplicity, you know, of this filming session, yeah, so, the loudness or volume of your voice affects customers in both a physical and emotional manner, for example, when a telemarketer speaks too loudly, the sound physically irritates the eardrums so much that the listener pulls the telephone receiver away and subconsciously decides that the caller is obnoxious and untrustworthy. <laughs> Likewise, in the case of someone who speaks too softly, the listener strains to under to understand the message and quickly comes to believe that the caller must be hiding something. Either way, the sound of the message becomes more important than its content. Yeah, so whenever you, you know, well, uh, so far, according to this book, uh, according to this particular chapter of this book, you know, let, um, titled let Lessons from 100 Cold, Cold Calls, you know, you, um, you know, we you know, in um, in order, you know, to you know, to pick the interests and the preference or and attune, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, the way or the the fashion or the manner, you know, in which we speak, when, you know, while we while we cold call, you know, to our clients or you know, or leads or potential uh, clients, you know, we can't, you know, um, speak, you know. Ni um, neither too loudly or too softly. You know, when you know, when, whenever you know, we, um, we 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 sound too too soft. You know, you know, it might just make you know, the, you know the you know the um, the um, the elements of of suspicion. You know, with um within that uh, that p potential uh, client, you know, arise. So. You know, it might make it might just make us sound quite fishy. You know, <laughs> so yeah, I I perceive you know that's what the you know the author is trying to say so far at this point. You know, in this book, yeah. And uh, remember that the listeners, not your perception of your of vo of vo um, remember that the listeners, not your perception of volume, is what counts. The best way to learn the appropriate volume on the phone is to call a colleague 
or family member who can offer immediate, honest feedback. Also, remember that the volume of your voice in a face-to-face -face situation may not be appropriate for the, for the telephone. The loudness perceived by the listener is affected by how close your mouth is to the receiver, the background noise in or around your office, and the telephone equipment you are using. Finally, listen to any changes in your loudness during. Um, finally, li listen to any changes in your loudness during the call. Uh, well, I don't know, but you know, uh, most. Um, or I should say, you know, most of the Brits or uh, you know, or um, British people. I you know, I you know, I came across or crossed paths with so far. You know, they they tend you know to say. Um, during as during um instead of uh, instead of saying it like during um not sure and uh, well still you know there's another you know um yes well self uh, at least self proclaimed uh, you know british girl you know um you know whom whom I also, you know, tend to perceive as a, you know, as a rich girl, um, you know, rich girl cheerleader type of you, um, of YouTuber, um, you know, tends to say it, you know. To so stay tuned if you're interested. If you're new here, my name's Izzy. I'm a medical student at Cambridge University, currently on a gap year learning Mandarin. Tends to say, um, during, you know, t tends to say, um, you know, more like during instead of during and you know ten, and she also tends to say um student instead of student you know so i'm not sure if you know it's it's uh it's you know wh whether it's appropriate you know to say it like during or during you know whenever you know you uh, you know you you practice um speaking in british posh or the received um pronunciation slash rp accent but i you know maybe you know they are both uh they are both um, maybe they are just both correct well since, since i haven't been to great britain my, myself um yet so um well if god willing i i certainly hope or wish that i that i you know that I be um, granted uh, an opportunity, you know, to 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 visit Great Britain in the future, you know, if God's still willing, you know. But still, yes, let us proceed. Yeah, one of my bad ha one of my bad habits is to is to talk louder and louder when a prospect expresses interest in what I'm selling. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, sometimes, or I should say. Oh, oftentimes, more often than not, I tend to follow such bad ha such bad habit of this author, you know, more or less here and there every now and then. Whenever I make a cold call, yes. Whenever you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, a potential client, a potential client begins to show some sort of interest or some degree or extent of. Uh, you know, um, keenness, you know, to know more or even to proceed with uh, with. With with uh, with buying, with making a purchase, with you know, with real with with real money, you know, in the in the actual, you know, in the physical and tangible part of the matrix, I then kind of begin to sound, you know, louder, or at least begin to talk louder and la louder <laughs> to raise my voice. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's resume. Yeah. I'm so excited to reach a li a, a live one after a day of living voicemails and uh, hearing rejections that my enthusiasm gushes out i want to shout the hurrah hua or hurrah 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 h u r r e r hurrah hurrah yeah that's how at least that's how uh, the british uh, female C um, siri tends to pronounce you know you know at least that's how the british ver version of siri tends to to say hurrah yeah not hara Hurrah! Hurrah! Yeah. Hurrah! Hurrah! Yeah, I want to shout hurrah and dance in the streets. I want the prospect to know. I, I want the prospect to know how happy I am that, that he likes what I'm selling and that he likes me. 
And <laughs> unfortunately, too much enthusiasm, like too much sugar in your coffee, can turn the delicious into the undrinkable. Buyers expect and appreciate a certain amount of enthusiasm from the seller when a buying decision is made. But when the seller seems too happy, <laughs> <laughs> but when the seller seems too happy, the, the buyer begins to wonder why <laughs> does, this, does the sell rep sell so few products that this particular transaction is extraordinary? <laughs> and if his sales are too, and if his sales are so limited, why doesn't he sell more? Is there something wrong with the product? Is there something is there something? Is there something wrong with him? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, it kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, it's um, yes, I might have made you know made yes, I, I I I should say I certainly made the same or highly similar mistakes back then. You know, even most recently, yeah, I kind of maybe I sound way too over enthusiastic whenever I make. Cold, cold calls or even just an ordinary somewhat ordinary voice call you know with my you know with my viewers and you know with my beloved viewers and and patrons probably yeah so yeah it, it might, might also make you sound you know um you know pu um, pushy and or in, in in intimidating if you you know, in you know, um, what once you know you you know you uh, um, you know you show too much enthusiasm, you know, in in your voice. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, on, on the same page. Yeah. So let's resume. The other problem with talking louder as interest increases is that prospect may mistake may may miss. May may mistake enthusiasm for an for an attempt at dominance. At one time or another, we've all experienced having someone in authority raise their voice in order, um, in order to control our behavior. Maybe it was a parent, a teacher, a boss, or a significant other. Regardless of the source, we didn't like it. Yeah, certainly. Um, Jesus, this chapter is so long, man. Yeah, so, um, um, what's next? Yeah, so rate, adjust the speed. English, um, English speakers in America speak at an average speed of 150 words per minute. Some studies have found that the superior speakers have a slower rate of speech, while others indicate that faster speakers are considered more persuasive. Oh, I didn't know that. The, um, the contradictions are apparent when one considers that FDR spoke at an average rate of 100 words per minute while JFK zoomed along at 180 words per minute. Optimal speaking rates also vary by geographic area. As a North Car as a as a North um, Carolina boy calling prospects in big cities up north, I've learned that some folks just naturally talk faster than I do and sometimes seem a bit irritated that I won't just get on with it. Generally, I try to match my rate of speech to the, to the person with whom I'm speaking if he or she is moving fast. I get on the bus. If the person is plowing along, I plow too. The, um, the object is to blend seamlessly into the buyer's world. With, with as little static and interference as possible. Yeah, so try kind of, you know, to, um, may, maybe the, all, um, the author here is um, trying to, to, to either in, insinuating or, you know, it's trying to, uh, to either in, insinuate or suggest that, you know, uh, one should kind of mimic or imitate, you know, the, you know, the speech 
patterns you know of you know of the um, of such uh, client or p potential uh, client um, you know to whom you know such you know such telemarketer is cold calling too so <clears throat> yeah it's uh yeah so that's kind of strange yeah it's kind of yeah it's, so far it sounds a bit a bit you know count um count counterintuitive to me well to say the least but let's proceed um, scientists e estimate that we think three times faster than we speak. Whoa, that's another striking discovery. Yeah, this dichotomy. Dichotomy. Yeah, this dichotomy has this dichotomy has several ramifications. First, your mind is typically racing as you as you speak not only examining the words you are saying at that instant but also thinking about what to say next whether the listener is actually listening and personal matters that just pop into your brain you're trying to stay calm but you but you're but you're worried about cl closing the sale considering the mental jumbo swirling through your head you must know your basic script so so completely that it can be delivered without thinking. You are like the juggler who can recite the Gettysburg. Um, the you are like the juggler who can recite the Gettysburg address while keeping three balls in the air. Um, please allow me to moisturize my throat and tongue. So well, well before I knew it, yeah, it's uh, you know it um, more more than twenty five minutes ha has already el el um, elapsed. You know since since I initiated this filming session. Um, yeah, so time truly flies quite fast, and time will not wait for anyone. Yeah, maybe for the, you know, maybe, just maybe, it's my speculation. So if I said, so if I made, made a, you know, so if I made a, a statement that, that, uh, that contradicts, you know, you, you know, God's plan or, you know, God's, you know, God's uh, per, um, perfect um, clockwork or, me or mechanism of the whole uh, c creation of, of his, please, you know. I beg your pardon, you know, I beg his pardon as much as I beg you guys pardon. So I, that, that I, that I might have said, you know, something, you know, quite, quite, um, you know, quite, um, you know, <laughs> quite um, irrational, quite um, inappropriate. So, but, but still, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, so whenever you know we kind of you know entered you know into uh, you know in, into the so-called you know uh, flow uh, flow state you know of the mind you know we then begin you know to you know to um to lose you know you know you know you know a sharp perception or you know or the you know or the you know or the sensation or the perception you know of time you know kind of you know um well since well um i did you know something um you know well you know uh, according to you know to what i did you know a as a returning favor you know for you know for an old, old friend uh, uh, of mine you know back you know back in australia you know and and, and who i who, you know with whom i've lost contact for around a couple of months you know despite you know my you know my endless um, you know my seemingly endless effort. You know, trying to re, trying to re reach out to him. You know, trying to re-establish, you know, you know a proper connection and con 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 um, contact with him. Well, I still struggle. You know, to you know to to get in touch w w with him. You know, due to some reasons. You know, I I I I I, I, I am completely been kept um, blind to. So. 
so I don't know and, and I wish you know I, I wish him all the best you know I would you know I hope that he's been doing well you know still safe and in one piece but I, but I don't know man I, I just you know hope that he could um, give me a helping hand you know I just you know sincerely hope sincerely and humbly hope that he could give me a, a, a helping hand with my current you know with our current co companies um, you know th um, the director ID crisis so yeah so yeah uh, without further ado yeah let us proceed with uh, you know with reviewing and you know by reading and uh, blending in my own experiences and thoughts and ideas you know of, you know of cold calls you know you know <clears throat> into you know this book I'm reading and giving you guys my my own reviews and thoughts about yeah so resuming chapter what ch chapter 24 of this book Le lessons from from a hundred uh, from a hundred thousand cold calls yeah um <coughs> excuse me so um rate yeah so so we are at right yeah um so if he or she is moving fast i get on the bus if the person is plow is plow plowing along i plow too the um the object is to blend seamlessly the the object is to blend blend um, seamlessly into the buyer's world with as little static and interference as possible um scientists estimate that we think three times faster than we speak this dichotomy has several ramifications first your mind is typically racing as you speak not only examining the words you are saying at an instant but also thinking about what to say next whether the listener is actually listening and personal matters that just pop into your brain you are trying to stay calm but you are worried about closing the sale considering the mental jumble swirling through your head you must know the you must know your basic script so completely that it can be delivered without thinking you are like the you are like you are you're like the the juggler who can recite the gettysburg address while keeping three balls in the air yeah i yeah speaking about you know speaking of uh what i'm um, speaking of the uh, yeah the you know speaking of uh <clears throat> Of, of this um, you know quote quote you must know your basic script so completely that it can be delivered without thinking end quote um, I, I I really I very you know I very really you know write you know wrote uh, you know write a a any script or scripts before I proceed to to to, to uh, you know to make co co calls you know except you know you know what when when um whenever you know i i i i could call you know to uh you know to a japanese person you know in japanese language you know yes very much likely i i i would rather you know write a um you know draft a script or scripts you know detailing you know what i plan to say you know how i plan to respond you know to you know to their questions or you know or their you know or or you know certain you know behavioral or speech pat um, patterns of theirs you know that that I suspect or I I perceive that I may or might you know come across yeah yeah so yeah secondly it's uh, it's important to remember that the listeners thoughts are moving faster than your speech by the time you by the time you've explained point number one the buyer may be thinking ahead to point number three your words must be so well crafted and your speed so well regulated that the, that the listener is connected to everything you say neither skipping ahead to what's coming next or thinking back on what you just said sales people have a general rep reputation for being fast talkers feeling um feeling uh Filling empty minds with so many words in such a short time that the can, that the customer finds the sales pitch ir irresistible. Um, this may work for snake oil salesmen, but not for ethical t 
telemarketers interested in long-term business relationships based on trust. The object is not to drown the, the prospect in 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 verbiage. In verbiage? Sorry, I just beg your pardon. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Verbiage. Verbiage, not verbiage. It sounds seems so French to me. Yeah, verbiage. A uh, verbiage. Yeah. It means um, excessively lengthy or technical speech or writing. Yeah. Also, under the context of the states, the way in which something is expressed, wording or diction, we need to look at how the rule should be applied based on the verbiage. Yeah. Yeah. So it pretty much means mumbo jumbos or jar um, jargons or you know te technical. You know, over technical terms. You know, th th that's my own thinking. Yeah, rambling. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, in Japanese, that you know, ac according to the Japanese um, dictionary, I have you know downloaded and installed on my on my current i iPads um, I iOS. In Japanese, it's it means uh, mu um, kataku. Mudana kotoba no oikoto takugen kotoba tsukai i mawashi. Yeah, yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, so yeah, um, so verbiage, yeah, um, the object is not to drown the prospect in verbiage but to make every word count. The goal is the goal is to is to get the listener to understand and accept a few key concepts uh, upon which more product detail can be added. Vary, um, vary the speed to gain emphasis. Speak fast enough to, to, um, to project enthusiasm, but slow down regularly to enable the listener to absorb what you've said and experience the emotion that your words have evoked. Say the more complicated and important points at a slower pace. Say the simpler, more personalized points at a slighter, faster pace. Yeah, so far, yes, this par this par par um, these two paragraphs, yeah, uh, quite, uh, yes, make a lot of sense to me, yeah. Um, though, you know, though, though I could, you know, though I can barely notice, you know, my own rate of, or pace of speech, you know, you know, whenever I make a cold call, a bunch of cold, cold calls. Um, but um, fortunately, thank thank God. Yeah, yes, I I tend yes, I at least I tend you know to um to record, and you know slash or or you know or document you know most of my you know um cold call set cold call sessions. You know, you know, and yes, I, I, unless you know. Somehow and some sometimes you know my you know my you know my laptop you know w which I frequently use you know to to record the cold calls c c conversation sometimes you know mysteriously you know mal uh, malfunctions and uh, it fails therefore it fails you know to to record the sound you know you know there, at least you know there there was one occasion you know in you know in in yes in which you know the file was uh, was you know the, the the recording file was created yet no no sound at all yes i i shall in i shall include you know part, part parts of such of such recording you know you know of you know of such you know um cold calling session you know th that i took that, that i took so much pride in you know it, it you know um but unfortunately you know um it you know it did you know it did, 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 did you know my my laptop failed you know to to record the sound and you know uh and um, I did not, you know, use my, you know, Canon G7X PowerShot, the, you know, the, um, the, the second, you know, you know, as a backup, e you know, equipment, you know, to record such cold call session simultaneously at, at, at the same time. So p perhaps, in order, you know, to minimize, you know, 
you know the the chance of such shite occurring again you know i might just need to yes to use you know this um ca this canon camera of mine you know to record you know um um re relative you know to 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 record those cold call se sessions of uh, relatively speaking you know more more importance and more uh, significance you know and uh, you know as some as some something that i can take kind of take pride in you know take pride in you know in you know in presenting you know to you guys you know to to serve as encouragement sources of encouragements and and uh, inspirations and you know and to evoke you know those you know who are more who are far more adept at making cold calls you know you know socializing you know with people you know they are quite un you know unfamiliar with yeah you know in in real life yeah so yeah you know you know so yeah long so in um in other words yes i certainly you know um desire you know to you know to improve you know my overall social engineering skills you know by making cold calls and uh, and uh, and by by making cold calls and through overcoming you know my fear of stuttering and then and the anxiety you know and OOCDs, etc. Yes, so, um, yeah, let's proceed. Um, so, pitch um, hit the notes. Pitch is a measure of frequency at which the sound waves vibrate, measured in hertz. H, um, capital H and, and the non capital Z. Like loudness, pitch is in the ear of the listener. Two sounds with the same frequency may not be perceived by two um, different people as having the same pitch. Loudness affects this perception. The louder the sound, the higher the pitch is thought to be. The male speaking voice averages 125 hertz, ranging from 100 to 150 hertz. For females, the average is 200 hertz. Ranging, ranging from 175 to 256 hertz. Men's voices are lower in pitch than women's. Even when allowing for body size, middle C on a piano is calculated at uh, 200, 261.6 hertz. And called C4, the first note in, in the fourth um, oc, um, alt Alt, octave, octave, octave. Yeah, the first note in the fourth octave on the piano. Yeah. Um, well, sadly, you know, I don't play pianos, so, so, so this term, you know, o o octave sounds rather, um, you know, obscure and. Uh, you know, unfamiliar to, to, to me. The first note and the fourth octave on the piano. Yeah, so what does octave mean? It means uh, the interval between... <coughs> excuse me. The interval between the two notes at the extremes of an octave. Um, a series of eight notes occupying the interval between and including two notes, one having twice or half the frequency of vibration of the other. Uh, even explain even explained you know in Japanese and Mandarin Chinese in these dictionaries I still don't quite get what it means <laughs> so never mind yeah just uh yeah let's shelf it for later so cross culturally several conclusions can be drawn out tone in human speech um, number one for both men and women persons with lower pitched voices are perceived as having more authority and strength Number two, adults use uh, use a higher pitch to talk with infants and young children. Number three, men and women use higher tones in greeting each other and in courtship. Yeah. Courtship. Yeah, court. It, it's courtship. Yeah, courtship. Not courtship. Courtship. Yeah, courtship. Courtship appeared during which a couple develop a romantic relationship, especially with a with a view to marriage. Yeah, it basically means uh, yeah, 
Yeah, it means you know the yes the you know the the period of time or the duration of time you know in which or at which you know uh, you know two human individuals of either you know d d different genders or the same genders you know um, you know get to know one another intimately yeah <laughs> that's my own thoughts and perceptions about you know what that would mean but still nevertheless let's proceed so um number four speakers use a, a rising pitch when asking questions the center for voice the, the center for voice disorders at wake forest university conducted a survey of celebrity voices james James O. Jones. Have I? Did I say that right? Um, James James O. Jones. Yeah. Let's let 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 Siri say that. Yeah. James L. Jones. James L. Jones. Yeah. And uh, Julia Roberts were judged as having the best overall voices. Fran uh, Drescher as having the worst. Generally, the survey results showed. That Americans prefer um, me uh, melodious, relatively low-pitched voices. Yeah. Just let Siri say this sentence to check if I pr pronounced this one correctly. Generally, the survey results showed that Americans prefer melodious. Melodious. Yeah. I yes. Voices. I manage, you know, to 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 have guessed, you know, the you know. The pronunciation of, of such word melodious um, rather c c correctly even even without pr pretty much knowing what it means in prior yes it's the first time that I I suppose you know it's the first time I, I know of I, you know in which I came across this word melodious, melodious yeah melodious it means relating to or characterized by by melody yeah the melodious chant of the monks, yeah, melodious or melodious in in Brit in British accent, it should sound like melodious instead of melodious, melodious, m m m m a for fish, melodious. Please feel free to correct me. Um, you know, in yes, should should I you know should I have have, have failed you know to um to distinguish you know this highly subtle you know difference um in you know in the vowel sounds you know between um you know the standard american accent and you know the standard slash rp or um posh british accent yeah please feel free to um to correct me yes i, I look forward to you guys to to you guys feedbacks and you know kind kind and uh, you know even intimidating corrections you know so yeah please do so i welcome that and yeah so um in telemark in telemarketing you you um you 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 sound irritating and immature if the pitch of your voice is too high if your pitch is is too low you will seem slow and in and unimaginative <clears throat> And then we have in um in intonation, in intonation or intonation. Intonation. Well, see, see, Siri, my at least my British Siri says like intonation instead of intonation. But let's check the dictionary. Well, the dictionary is at least uh, some version of the dictionary says it should pronounce intonation instead of intonation yet some say it's intonation instead of intonation or, or intonation instead of intonation so that's strange but we shall um, yeah we shall leave it shall um, shelve it shelve it for later for later um, clarification or confirm confirmation or research you know in into further or deeper depths yeah if god willing yeah amen so intonation get a rhythm get a rhythm um rhythm, rhythm. 
Yeah, rhythm, R not rith rhythm, rhythm, rith the 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 for them, the for they. Yeah, rhythm instead of rhythm. Yeah, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. <clears throat> Get a rhythm. Chord intonation, variation in pitch affects perception. For example, a study of non-verbal communication at Boise, uh, at Boise, Boy, Boy, what? Boise. Boise. Yeah, at, uh, for example, a study of non-verbal communication at Boise State University found that attorneys with with greater pitch and tempo variety were perceived as more friendly. Another study concluded that ascending musical scales are rated as happier um, and brighter than than um, than descending ones. Really, um, well, I certainly enjoy listening to a, a variety of music and and songs. You know, in in, in particular, you know, J um, J pops. Sometimes also Mandarin pops and the can, 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 Cantonese pops and some and some um, synchronies, some you know some 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 um, synchronies, you know and yes and last but not least you know um, the you know the original sound soundtracks of uh, vi of of you know of uh, of uh, video games and many other sorts of uh, telebi dolamas yeah. So if your pitch is unchanging in the course of conversation, you will sound like you are reading a script or are, are bored with the whole thing. If your pitch varies too often and too erratically, um, you will you'll sound like a psycho. <laughs> Unfortunately, many telemarketers speak in lower and lower pitches as they conclude their comments. The effect is to make them seem less and less excited about the product and more and more apologetic for making the call in the first place. Needless to say, this problem drains whatever excitement the listener might have acquired during the call. Conclude a call with the same energetic ascending pitch you used when you began it. To find the right level and variation in and variation in speech, practice in private. Record your voice and listen objectively. Then ask others to listen and offer feedback. Yes, that's exactly you know one you know one of the purposes you know and uh, you know and the reasons you know why I have I been keeping making a, making a videos and uh, you know and uh, you know trying to keep up the pace of making more, you know, uh, you know, not more and more cold calls, but at least cold calls, you know, on a fairly, fairly regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes, I kind of, yes, f fully agree with, 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 with what these two, these few, these several par paragraphs, you know, have said. Yeah. So resuming re reading. Yeah. Um, to, to find the right level and variation in pitch, practice in private, record your voice and listen objectively. Um, then ask others to listen and offer feedback. Experiment until you find a, a consistent range that seems comfortable to say and pleasing to the listener. Knowing when to pause is just as important as knowing what to say. Without pauses, everything we say is one long sentence, merely a bucket of words without meaning and without influence. Without pauses, the listener has no opportunity to swallow your message and open his mouth for another bite. Yeah, so give, yes, I, yes, I, I suppose, yes, in other words, give uh, plenty of time, you know, slash, allow plenty of time, you know, for your list, you know, for the listener, you know, for your, um, for your, pro pro um, you know, for your prospect slash potential clients, you know, to, you know, to chew, you know, on, you know, to, to chew on the messages, you know, you have conveyed to them so far, you know, allow them, you know, maybe at least, at least uh, five, five seconds or, or 10 seconds, you know, to, you know, even, even more, you know, to, to, for them to, to chew and then, you know, for them to process, you know, the messages, the information you, you presented, you, you have presented to them. So, so, um, so far, yeah. 
So yeah, knowing when to yeah um yeah um resuming yeah punctuation is is the most is the most is is the most common indicator that a pause is due. The period at the end of a sentence signals a slight hesitation before the next sentence begins. Um, commas, um, commas play uh, um, commas play the same role within sentences. Commas, um, signaling the need to pause between phrases. A pause is also valuable after delivering a major section of a script. For example, after you explain who you are and what company you represent, pause before explaining. Oh, uh, pause before explaining what you sell. If you are um, if you are listing um, if you are listing the major benefits of your product, pause after each. The goal is to provide dramatic emphasis to your message and allow the buyer to absorb that message before hearing the next one. Yeah, so uh waiting too long between sentences, phrases or script sections will make you sound um um stilted and unsure. Pauses that are too brief are in some ways worse than no pauses at all. They tease and ultimately aggri um they tease and ultimately um um a um, uh, ag um, aggravate the listener who cannot seem to catch his breath as you sprint down the field. Yeah, probably you know yes, not probably, but uh, most de most definitely, we should always, always, always you know give our listeners plenty of time, you know, to process, you know, to process, you know what we we've said to them thus far um you know you know and uh yeah you know for you know for them you know to to you know to give their own adequate re responses you know by you know by by giving you know plenty you know an ample slash an ample um, amount or durations of pauses you know in the in a conversation, you know, not not just you know o over the phone, but also you know fa face to face ones, face to face meetups, conversations, catch ups, even you know even parties, you know, and some some other sort of socializing events, etc. So on and so forth. <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so um um excuse me. I beg your pardon for having to sp to spit a bit of you know the you know the dust you know on on, on this lamp might have you know in in entered into my mouth you know while I speak, so yeah, just uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I beg your pardon for spitting in front <laughs> of uh, this um, filming session, but yeah. Um, waiting, um, waiting too long between sentences, phrases or script sections will make you sound um, stilted and unsure. Pauses that are too brief are in some ways worse than no pauses at all. They tease and out ultimately aggravate the listener who cannot seem to to catch his breath as you sprint down the field. So what does suited mean? Stilted. Stilted should mean uh, unstable, of a manner of talking or writing, stiff and self-conscious or unnatural. Yeah. Okay. Suited. It, it, it can sound kind of uh, so. Suited should mean something that uh, you know that having you know that that has you know you know a lot of uh, pre um, pre pretenses and uh, you know um, false representations. Yeah. So it might just yes unnatural and un uncanny. Yeah. 
Sort of, yeah, but yeah, awkward, yeah, awkward, unnatural, wooden, unrelaxed, artificial, mannered, yeah, strained, forced, con, con, um, contrived, constrained, labored, laborious, stiff, yeah. Antonyms include, but not, not limited to, natural, effortless, spontaneous. Oxford, um, well, according to Oxford, um, Oxford Thesaurus. Of English, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I, I beg your pardon. Yes, it's uh, yes. I I filmed this filming session for you know for two you know for two consecutive maximal filming length or um or um already. So let's uh, try to catch up the pace a, a little bit. So I might have to just read a bit faster. You know, from now on in this filming session, at least, you know, in the last, you know, in the last section or part of this particular filming session we are currently having. So yeah, let's proceed. Yeah. So during conversations, pauses serve additional purposes. Remember when your father was reminding you to do something you already knew you should do but didn't want to do. Um. He'd just say your name, followed by a long pause. Um, Stewart. There was no mistaking what the what um, there was no mistaking what that silence meant. Another example of a conversational pause is the non-answer to a question. You ask, "Do you understand what I'm trying to say?" The other person says nothing, which could mean that he or she number one doesn't understand. Two is too. It is too irritated with your with you to answer, or three is too intimidated to say anything. Regardless, those few seconds of silence speak volumes. Generally, when a prospect says nothing after your presentation, it is an indication that the person that the person is considering your words and wants to know more. This is the perfect time to ask a question. Because the listener is already asking some type of question in his own mind, like will this work with our existing system? Can this company really be trusted? Can I afford it? And so on. Ask an open, ask an open-ended question such as, "What do you think? Or do you think this might of um do you or do you think this might of some help to you?" The first words out of the buyer's mouth will probably indicate that the that that. Person's primary concern, and then here it comes you know、um, one of my favorite part of this chapter thus far. Yeah, so、um, let's resume. Yes, let's try to wrap this up. So next we have fluency. Speak smoothly. Researchers define fluency as speech that is free of long pauses, hesitations, repetitions, and、um, ex. Um, e- extravagant vocal sounds. Extraneous. E- extraneous, not extravagant. Extra- extraneous. Extraneous. Some、um, researchers define fluency as speech that is free of long pauses, hesitations, repetitions, and extraneous vocal sounds such as um or hmm hmm. In st- in a study of attorneys' opening statements, J. K. Barge. And the, and associates found that lawyers with a fluent style were considered more competent and dynamic than those without. Competent. Yeah, competent. 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 I tend to say, well, still more often than not, well, I still tend to say competent instead of competent. But, well,、uh, but but my British version of Siri. Uh, still says something quite in between, you know, like you know,、um, competent and competent, you know, in you know, instead of me, you know, try, try, trying to sound quite, you know,、um, stilted, you know, you know, like 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 this. Stilted. Yeah, you know, like comp competent. You are so competent. I admire you. Comp co competent. You are so competent. You are highly competent. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! You are so competent. Yeah. Well, that's. <laughs> well, I hope I have made you laugh. <laughs> 
still, yeah. The key to selling on the telephone is developing trust with the listener. And the key to developing trust is to approach the buyer naturally and with, without pretense. Like a friendly new neighbor, even though you are delivering the same script over and over again. The words don't sound scripted, they sound natural and friendly, effortless and smooth. You are, you're, you're not st um, stumbling and bumbling over awkward phrases or high-tech terminology. You are not thinking about what to say because the words, the phrasing, the pauses, the, the emphasis, everything you say and the, and the way you say it have been so fine-tuned and so um, thoroughly, 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 yeah. In well, in, at least in standard American accent, we say it thoroughly. But I'm, I'm not sure about how 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 um, how I I'm, I'm supposed to say that. You know, in you know, in British posh a a a accent, it's it should be well according to the dictionaries I have installed on my I iPad. It should it should be thoroughly thoroughly in British and thoroughly you know, in American. Yeah, Thor thoroughly or thoroughly, thorough thoroughly. Thoroughly, thoroughly, yeah, yeah. So everything you say, um, everything you say, and the way you say it have been so fine-tuned and so and so thoroughly rehearsed that they flow like water into the ears of the buyer. And uh, then we have in um, in um, what, what's this? Enunciation. Enunciation. Yeah, enunciation. Say it distinctly. Say or pronounce clearly, yeah, enunciation. Uh, say or pronounce clearly, she enunciated each word slowly, yeah. Say each word distinctly, without sounding formal. This sounds a bit counterintuitive again, yes. So, so, so why, why, do, uh, why do you reckon, you know, the author, you know, here, says you know um, say each word distinctly without sounding formal why why, why can't I sound for formal when, when, when I make cold calls you know to you know to you know to to you know to people you know mo mostly online I crossed paths with well why why well shouldn't I sound uh, you know as formal as I can or well I I, I don't know but let's proceed let's uh, shelve that yeah for the time being, yeah. Devote particular attention to the beginning and ending sounds. Finish saying word one before starting to say word two. Insert a millisecond pause between each word as needed, but don't extend the pauses too long. Speak so clearly that the listener understands every word. The trick is to sound intelligent without sounding snobby. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> let's finish this section, yeah, and then we can call it a day. So, the words you emphasize w w within a given sentence can vastly change how the buyer perceives your meaning. A company called American Accent Training uses the following examples in training outsourced telemarketers how to speak standard American English. Consider how a sentence's meaning changes as different words are emphasized. I didn't say, I didn't say he stole the money. Someone else said it. I didn't say he stole the money. That's not true at all. I, I didn't say he stole the money. I only suggested the possibility. I didn't say he stole the money. I think someone else took it. I didn't say he stole the money. Maybe he just borrowed it. I didn't say he stole the money, but rather some other money. <laughs> I didn't say he stole the money. He may have taken some jewelry. <laughs> speak clearly if you speak at all. Carve every word before you let it fall. Oliver Wendell Holmes, yeah. Speak clearly if you speak at all. Carve every word before you let it fall. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yeah, Oliver Wendell Holmes. 
yeah so yeah that's that's it i i suppose for, for this you know migtao book book club filming session yeah so unfortunately you know th this this chapter seems you know too long for me just to finish you know filming you know in one single filming session so i have to shelve you know sh shelf you know you know the other half of that cha ch chapter and possibly you know some other chapters you know for further reviews research and and uh, commentaries plus you know my own lousy you know you know narration in my lousy british posh accent so yeah um i hope yeah i, I sincerely and and uh, hum humbly hope that you you know that you know both you you and me ha have learned and gained you know some something valuable you know um you know from this filming session and uh, um, yeah i shall definitely you know strive you know to you know to make to create you know more con more contents you know particularly you know con um, contents and the videos about making cold calls you know I including but are not limited to making cold calls you know um yes on a fairly regular basis you know whenever i perceive that i can strive you know to produce uh, videos of uh, of of um, a better quality you know pertaining to how to make cold calls you know how, how to overcome stuttering you know by making cold calls and blah 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 yeah so yeah thank you very much again for watching and listening to this video and thank you very much you know for being with me to the end of this video slash filming session so uh, yes I, I i also hope that if god's still willing you know i hope to see you guys next time in my next videos on youtube yeah and uh um take care be well try not to kill yourselves you know treat instead learn to t look after yourselves you know treat yourselves you know well and uh, you know learn to treat you know to give some treats to yourselves you know s you know s such as you know by eating something quite um quite you know quite um d d um d delicious and uh, highly attuned you know to your pre preferences and tastes um d despite you know it's relatively speaking you know high cost you know you know well for me you know i tend to eat um stirred fried um at, at least um in my case you know I, I i tend to treat myself you know to to give myself some treats every now and then you know by you know by you know by you know you know with some um steamed um you know sea um sea sea water fish you know and some you know and some milk you know some belgian made milk ch chocolates um <clears throat> yeah and uh, yeah um etc so yeah um other than that you know i uh you know yes fab and banging my sex door yes that that can that can also count as you know as you know as giving myself you know some treats every now and then so yeah um so yeah um take take care stay safe cheers amen Awa, and may god continue to bless us all if his almighty is still willing amen bye